Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. We're rolling. Okay. It's one girl circus, just like you guys do. Okay. Except there's two of you. I'm oh. so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to co-host? I, you know, oh, I, I tried. You us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you're here today. Oh, you can to be our be friend my, too. <laughs> to be my co-host. But I, I started with a co-host. Yeah, I and so. it just... I wasn't meant to be. It's hard to work with another person. I mean, we've been in business together oh. for six years. <laughs> and, and, oh. I mean, every day is not a dream. <laughs> Ashley is, so is a nightmare. Right Honestly, never <laughs> open talking about our relationship that way. She's like, this is tough. <laughs> Why are we friends again? Uh. <laughs> Uh, uh, all right, let me back up. Ashley is like my family and my best friend. We run two businesses together, but it's not easy. It's um, not. Totally, I guess. Every, I thought, day, yeah. every day it's your dream to work with another person. You don't want to just make every decision by yourself? Well, Wouldn't just, that be fun? <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> sorry, Thank you. Mind. Making her accountable. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know where to go from here. Um, we'll I, love you. I love you so much. I love our business so well, much. I mean, we talk a lot about, yes, I'm like, like to do things my way. I've never been able to have a boss and I've always wanted to work for myself and everything. I had yeah. trouble. Ashley has problems with authority. I've been told my whole life, but oh, same. it's really nice to have somebody, especially when shit's going badly to like go back and forth with and to, we tour together. You know, I kind of, there's, I don't really find all the ne negative things. Like I guess, right. It does. <laughs> I, I never said it was negative. It's being in business with anybody for six years is hard. And we socialize yeah. together and we spend holidays together. And I actually don't find it that hard. Morgan. <laughs> I actually love it. I love being in a partnership and we, I don't know what's happening here. We spend Christmas together. We are best friends. We're like family. <laughs> I mean, I mean, a very I mean, fine been struggling. Line. <laughs> They're going to take this one on Reddit. They're going to take it away. <laughs> oh. I just run the tape. I said nothing bad. It is. I stand by it. A lot of a lot of people break up, and we haven't. I will say we have a six great, years is impressive. We have a, yeah. we have a really wonderful business relationship, allegedly. But uh, people, it, 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 <laughs> allegedly, in, in my opinion, no, I'm kidding. Okay, but it's. I get to Raina's point. It is hard. Like I've worked with other people before. Yeah, and it didn't really men specifically. You know, it yeah. doesn't really work out. You need someone that like pulls their weight that you share common goals and Absolutely. all those things. So. Absolutely. Anyway. Podcast world, touring world, it's a tough gig we got going here, yeah. but it's a privilege. We love it. Um, for those of you listening, I'm so bad about introducing my guests. So <laughs> you might have recognized their voices, but today we are joined by Raina and Ashley from Girls Gotta Eat. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> my little DJ horn. We're so excited to be here. Yeah, we're I'm, so excited. I've been trying to get you guys for probably years. You we had, had years. Didn't we have a date, and then there was some AC issue. Which thank yes. God you didn't bring us here with no AC. That was in the like mid middle of the summer. It was terrible. It's one thing after another. Like you guys are having studio trouble. I have studio trouble. It's either the AC doesn't work, or now after like all the rain in LA, it smells like damp. Everything's damp. It's yeah, just, it's not good in here right yeah. now. <laughs> but yeah, I I originally I feel like you guys were when I started podcasting. Just like the people I really looked up to. And I was like, these girls are fucking crushing it. They're bringing dancers on at their tours. Like, what are they doing? This is what I want to do with my life. So thank you so much. And we're going to have you on it. our show. Yeah, also. We can't so wait. we're excited to have you. And everything you built here is wonderful. We're just going to gas you up too. But um, <laughs> we, we love it. And you've had really fun guests too. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's hard having your own studio at home. But we love it. Yeah. It looks great here. Luckily, it's not my house. I, I used to do it there. But I'm really excited to have you guys on today. Your podcast is it definitely gives the vibe for the girls. Like mm -hmm. you talk about relationships, sex, everything under the sun. Like I've listened to the episodes that you have with um, psychologists, psychiatrists. You have experts on talking about narcissists. That's like the most recent one I, yeah. I got uh -huh. into today. So you're very for the girls. So today's theme, what we're working with <gasps> Ooh. is people that appear to not be very for the girls. Ugh. I was hoping you'd do a theme for us. I'm excited. I, I know. I was listening this morning um, to an episode. I was getting like all fired up. I was telling you, but I was like, I wonder if we're going to have a theme. I was hoping for a theme. This is the, the theme. And we also encourage like couples to listen. And we think that anybody that dates women should also listen. Um, a guy yeah. friend of ours was saying um, that he he was like, I listened to you guys recently and I think more men should listen. And we we're like, yeah, we, we think so too. We think that it's really important information to learn how to date other people. Yeah. yeah it's like a serious hack. <laughs> Honestly, like you, you give an inside look into women's heads and also how to have, like, it feels like have a healthy relationship, yeah. friends, family, partners. Thanks. Come one, come all. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. 
<laughs> okay. Well, you're definitely going to get fired up again today. Oh so uh, let's up. let's dive in. Okay. So up first, this is coming from Two Hot Takes subreddit, but it was originally posted in Am I the Asshole nine days ago. Okay. Thank God for screenshots because the moderators of Reddit removed it. Oh. So it is titled. This must be dirty. It's people hated him. Yes. Am I the asshole for going on a hiking trip with my pregnant wife? Over the weekend, my wife and I went on a hiking trip with some of my friends. We've always been active people, but it kind of seems like my wife, who's six months pregnant, has turned into a couch potato in recent weeks. It's caused her to gain a bit of weight and become moody. So I figured some exercise would be good for her and me. This feels like a like a I, joke. Like, have you ever heard of pregnancy? She seems a little moody. Uh, yeah, you try strapping a watermelon to your body. She seems a little body. tired, moody, and is gaining weight. Could she be pregnant? Shocker. <laughs> like, if you told somebody, I feel really tired and moody and I'm gaining weight, they'd be like, you're pregnant. It's literally the definition of pregnancy. Yeah, but That's he's like, I can't symptom. even think why. She's just being a bitch. <laughs> That's insane. Well, I thought I picked a pretty easy hike. It's a trail that's close to our house and not that long, about three miles out and back, but it can be a bit steep in places. She's done it before, so it couldn't have been too much of a surprise. Well, we were about one third of the way done when my wife started huffing and puffing. My friend slowed down to accommodate her, so I decided to slow down too. After half a mile of huffing and puffing, my wife looked pretty bad. She got really pale and was hunched over on the side of the trail. I was sort of shocked to see her in this state. She had let herself go recently, but I didn't think she would lose her fitness this quickly. However, a few minutes later, she actually started to throw up. And it was at this point that we all decided to head back. He knows she's pregnant, right? <laughs> I just, but right? He does know she's pregnant. It feels fake. It feels so wild. She let herself go? What are you talking about? She's making a baby. I'm fully aware that she's going to deliver a baby in three months. Thank you. But I can't help but think that she wouldn't have embarrassed me in front of my friends if she had kept up with her exercise routine. We both ate the same food at breakfast and I never got sick. So that couldn't be it either. We got back to the parking lot and I apologized for my wife's behavior to my friends. I thought I was out of earshot, but apparently my wife heard the whole thing. When I got back to the car, she went nuts. She told me that I was an idiot for thinking she could keep up at our normal pace and that I was a grade A asshole for insinuating that my wife had thrown up on purpose. I listened to her rant at me before politely asking if she thought she would have felt so sick if she hadn't been a couch potato recently. But she refused to engage with me at all. I wanted it to dawn on her that she was at least partially to blame for this, but she refused to take any responsibility. This happened on Saturday, and even today has been really tense. It's as if she's holding a grudge against me, and I don't know how to get her to stop. She's making me really sad with this horrible treatment. Am I the asshole? Straight to jail. So uh, we don't like to overuse this word, but he is a narcissist. I mean, full blown. Like this is one of the main things we talked about on our episode this week with Dr. Romani about someone else's struggle being your inconvenience. Like to not be able Ooh. to even understand what she must be dealing with, that it's just like a problem for him. It's like top level narcissism. Wow. And I really feel... For her, well, I, I don't know. She married this guy, but I feel for her to be having a kid with this person. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me reframe this for this guy. This woman <laughs> has probably been hearing from her husband for a while. I think you've kind of overly let yourself go. We're not doing as much activity. And so she says, I'm going to try to do this for you to make you happy, mm -hmm. to maybe get myself back in shape. To, she did this for him. It certainly wasn't for her. Nobody that's six months pregnant wants to take a three-mile a three mile hike. So what a, what a pleasure to be married to somebody what an honor to have a partner that wants to do that for you but you're right somebody who's like such a narcissist would never look at it like that well and you sometimes don't know or you don't encounter something this extreme until something like this happens I mean you know we were talking about how you can really be in a relationship with a narcissist for 
quite some period of time, depending on the type of person you are. If you're someone that's a little more agreeable, amenable, and just gives them all the compliments and bends to them all the fuel that they need. And it's when something inconveniences them that you see the side of them. And it's, I mean, I feel very confident in my assessment of this. Like, that's a crazy thing. Like, it's also, it's just like every woman has, experiences something different. Like, do you, does he not have any women in his life? Does he have a mom, like a woman friend, like anybody that's been pregnant? Like some women are bedridden from what five months on or when, whenever the fuck, you know, like some women have such struggles. Like the fact that she is even agreeing to this at six months means she's like pretty healthy in her pregnancy. It's, oh, just, yeah. it's just crazy. I'm not expecting a man to understand everything about a woman's pregnancy and body, but enough to be like, this is a huge deal. Absolutely. And like another mark of a narcissist is they really can only see the world through the lens of how it affects them. Mm -hmm. So he is embarrassed by how she right. acted. The embarrassment. He wants her to apologize to him. He wants her to apologize to his friends. He's apologizing to the friends. He's not even going to save face for his partner by saying she's right. obviously pregnant, guys. Like, <laughs> yes. he, like that is the only way a narcissist can see the world is how you have affected them and not what you have done for them. Can you imagine it's like baffling any normal, stable, non-narcissistic, decent partner would be like, babe, I am so sorry. I pushed you too hard. I feel terrible. I, you know, they would be just like telling the friends like, you guys, I feel so terrible. I can't believe I put her through this. She's obviously wasn't um, in a good place to be doing this. Like, it's just, it's actually the complete opposite of what you want in life. Yeah. Like the other farthest end of the spectrum of what is like a decent partner. Yes. And if I'm <sighs> so making disgusting. a baby and I'm sick all the time and I'm swollen and I'm gaining weight, all I want for my partner is to remind me how beautiful I am all the time, <laughs> how important I am to them. Like you have lost control of everything your body used to be. Mm -hmm. And I, all I want to do is be reminded of how great I am and how thankful you are and how beautiful I am. It's such a vulnerable state. I mean, I feel like yeah. this guy is on a different planet and I think you both are very spot on with this. To find yourself inconvenienced by her pregnancy, like what did you expect? And I think it's really scary because a lot of people don't find out their partner is like this until something like pregnancy or immediately after the wedding when they're locked in and it's mm -hmm. not easy to just like break up and move on. Yeah. Like, that's what's fucking terrifying about this. But all it takes is a quick Google search. Like, what does a women's body look like at six months? Because I don't know, like, I don't, I haven't looked at these a lot. But where the fuck is her diaphragm supposed to fit? Right. She's huffing and puffing. It's insane. I huff and puff walking up a flight of stairs. Yeah. This, She's six months pregnant uh, doing a three mile hike. To, I know this morning coming back from getting coffee voice noting, I started to get a little short of breath. I parked <laughs> up the hill next to your studio. I'm not even looking forward to going back to my car. <laughs> but <this> is, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to carry rain up <laughs> and I will have sympathy for her. No, <laughs> but this is just, it's also so textbook about her body changing. So we, um, also d discussed this recently with Dr. Romney, kind of like they need you to look in a certain way for their self-image. So he doesn't really like that she's been gaining any weight at all, even though it's due to literally having a baby grow inside of her. But so that's a whole nother thing. So he also feels super embarrassed and inconvenienced by her body changing in the first place. Mm -hmm. I can see a world in which um, a couple, she's pregnant, and for six months, the wife says to the husband every single day, I hate my body. I feel so disgusting. Mm -hmm. I can't believe all this weight I've gained. And the husband's saying, well, let's take a walk every day. Mm -hmm. Let's try to take a walk two days a week. And then the husband's saying, like, she says she doesn't like this, and she says she feels yeah. bad. And I'm trying to help, and nothing's helping, because I'm just suggesting some, like, light, let's take a stroll around the block. That is the only scenario in which I can see somebody being a little bit frustrated. This is psychotic. This is absolutely so crazy. Yeah. It's just when you're pregnant, listen, anything goes. Women go through hell. I mean, some women have nausea for months on end, oh migraines, you know, the hormones, all the things. Yeah. And also just as soon as you have that baby, oh my God, the whole, the hormone drop. I mean, the postpartum, it's just, it's not easy. It's, it's not, you got to be ready for that shit. And it's your a narcissist will never be ready. Oh, top comment pops off on them. All caps, all caps. Your wife didn't let herself go. <laughs> she is growing another human being in her body, and it's tiring. She needs to relax when she feels tired, not need to go out and do hikes because you think she needs it. Also, she is going to gain weight. It's not from being a couch potato. It's perfectly healthy. You would want to be concerned if she wasn't gaining right, weight. Right, right. And then there, that's it for the caps. Well, we were about one third of the way done when my wife started huffing and puffing. My friends slowed down. They like, quote, 
and all caps again, you thought she should be able to keep up normal pacing? You're the asshole. You seriously owe your wife a huge apology. She didn't embarrass you. You embarrassed yourself with your own behavior. Also, she's really making you sad with this horrible treatment. Do you have any remorse for how you treated her? No, they don't. And all these comments are futile. This is just a full blown narcissist that nothing will, would matter. Even if you scream this in his yeah. face, he would find a way to like misdirect and be like, uh, uh, like not hear it. You know, there's no. Well, anybody that starts from this stance, like I, we always talk about like, there's no reason to like, if you look at a person's stance on something and you're like, this is a crazy person. Yeah. Then you already know you're starting from a point where you're not talking to somebody that's rational. So right. you can't like give them normal examples of how like behavior should be because they're never going to see your side of it. Anybody who would write this to begin with is not a normal functioning human being. Yeah, you will never win. No. Is anybody and, defending them? No. God, no. <laughs> no. Well, you said some stuff got deleted? Yeah, so the the moderators removed it. They have a bunch of reasons. Um, like what? Keeping the community safe, civil, and true to its purpose is the main one. That's what they attached to this one. Yeah, it's there's, so anti-woman and it's like so anti-pregnancy and it's, like health. Yeah, it's just like kind of they could remove it because it's just such utter bullshit mm -hmm. or like our OP didn't follow rules. Like each subreddit has such a variety of rules. So it's like be civil, accept your judgment. So OP like might have gotten these comments and then went to like fight people in the comments. Oh, account has been suspended. So I can't mm. directly search for any comments from him. That guy will definitely fight with people in the comments. Like, oh there's gosh. no way he's going to be like, I see your side of things. Right. Yeah. But luckily, I don't see any not the assholes. It's all you're the asshole. People tearing him apart. Um, So I think we're safe that we're sane. Yeah. I think I we know we're sane. Less, totally. I think but, there's a lot of men that would be really honored to be with somebody like her. And I hope she gets away from this guy and finds somebody else. That is. is. I can't imagine anything worse than locking in for life with a child, with a yeah. person like that. I just so. co-parent, like co-parenting is so much easier than <sighs> being married and raising a child directly with someone like this. Right. But yeah. My mom co-parented with some fucking crazy assholes. Really? Yeah. And we all turned out okay. So co-parent. <laughs> co, co yeah. <sighs> oh no. Poor thing. You seem I great. know. I want an update. Like turned out great. I mean, I'm a very well-balanced individual. <laughs> You're just saying. It. Just saying. Okay. Moving along. One of this week's partners is ZocDoc. It is March, which means it's Colon Cancer Awareness Month, and our very own dad just got a colonoscopy and had three polyps removed. And... They are not cancerous. Which is wonderful to know, to really be able to rest easy and know that I'm... A-okay. I am A-okay as far as my, my internals of my belly. But if dad wouldn't have gotten those polyps checked and removed, they could have turned into something far, far worse. So get screened and get your colonoscopies. And if you're confused on where to start, try ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Lauren actually found her gastro doc on ZocDoc and has her own colonoscopy be coming up soon. By using ZocDoc, you're going to find those quality doctors that actually listen to you when you tell them your symptoms, want to investigate and do the test to find out what's going on. And the way ZocDoc lets you find these amazing doctors is by showing you real, real reviews from patients just like you. And my favorite part, besides the reviews, because I love creeping on those, I love knowing if the doctor is going to take my insurance before I even walk in the door. So know before you go, thanks to ZocDoc. If you're ready to try it for yourself, go to ZocDoc.com slash THT and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash THT. ZocDoc dot com slash THT. This one is 14 hours old. It oh, is titled. Fresh. It's very fresh. <laughs> Steaming. It's titled, Am I the Asshole for Upstaging the Bride? with an outfit that was approved prior to the wedding. This is Kendall Jenner. Did she write this? <laughs> it was my first Western wedding, so I was careful about avoiding cultural gaff. I'm friends with the groom and asked him for the dress code. It was dressing up to our nines in neutrals and pastels. I have this lovely sari that fit the bill. I sent him a picture and he said, it's perfect. Five months before the wedding, I met the bride with many other of the groom's friends at a bar. I showed her a picture of the sari to ask if it was appropriate. I also told her I'd be happy to buy a new outfit if it wasn't. So whatever she says will go. She said it was delightful 
and she'd be glad to have some culture added to her wedding pictures. LOL, I know, right? I don't love that (laughs) comment. (laughs) The day arrived. Friends stayed in the back for the ceremony, so there weren't many eyes on me. For the reception, the bride changed into a gown that could be described as grayish white. It was the same fabric as my outfit. The majority and outer layer of her gown was still white. Only the embroidery was the same color as my sari, and the underneath fabric had a hint of the same gray as mine, thus making it grayish. The groom, his mother, and our friends complimented me for how nice I looked. The groom's mother especially loved it, as she kept coming up to me to compliment me more. She's half Indian and was brought up in the country. She too had worn a sari for the special day, and seeing someone else in it seemed to be sentimental for her. The bride and her bridesmaids, though, were a different ball game. The bride gave me a stank eye. A bridesmaid tried to spill her drink on me. Another commented if my outfit was going to turn out white in the pictures, we're going to have a problem. When we showed up to get group pictures done, I thoughtlessly ended up standing next to the couple. The bride made moves so that I ended up at the very corner by the time the photographer started clicking. As we stood in a group for the bouquet throwing thingy, the maid of honor asked if I'm going to try to catch it, like I haven't gotten enough attention for the day. On our way back, I asked my friends if my behavior or outfit was inappropriate. They didn't think anything of it. But am I the asshole? Oh my gosh. So well, much. she got it pre-approved. And if it was just the groom, I'd be like, that's your fault for asking the man. Totally. That's, that's where I thought it was going. Um, I thought she but, only got the, the male approval. And I can also, I mean, I can see the bride being like, doing a little mental gymnastics, being like, I don't want to tell someone not to wear something. I don't love it. I guess I'll just say it's okay. She's not going to be in a lot of photos. But like, she said it was fine. It's her wedding. If there's any day to like pull rank, it is your wedding it's day. It's that day. Yeah. Well, so she, the, she, the, um, OP, is that the term? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, You're fitting right in. <laughs> the OP made this, she had a lot of details surrounding the colors were the same with the gray and all that stuff. Was that part of it? Like, was were, or was that just kind of like additional information we didn't need? I feel like, was it that they matched too closely or everything just looked kind of white in I, the photos or in the, the night? I think she's just trying to give as much context as possible. Okay. She actually did share a picture of her sari. Oh my God, can we see it? Yeah. Because you said, I didn't catch the part where she said it was the same color. You just said fat, oh. I mean, it's Um, lightish, grayish, baby blue. It looks baby blue to me. Yeah. But then, like, was this, it was a West, that's gorgeous, by the way. It was a Western theme. So were they supposed to be in neutrals? You know, like, there's only so many neutrals you can rock. Honestly, that's a good point. The fact that the groom said neutrals, I think that's risky. Neutrals for people is cream. Yes. Like a lightish. Throw on an ivory. Yellow. Otherwise, pastels. what is it? Just brown? You know, like, what are you supposed to do with that's that? It, brown. Because you you really, like, I, I do, like, bright to a wedding, you know, especially if it's like a spring or summer wedding. You want to, like, I like to have like a pop and you're so far from white. Yeah. Neutrals, I'd be kind of like, what am I supposed to do here? Neutrals is this room. Also, when I'm shopping, if I've never had a wedding of my own or been to like events in a long time, I'm not thinking, is this gray or light blue going to appear white in photos? Like most people are not going to take the extra step and say like, how is this going to look in a photo? As long as you're not in the bridal party, you're not staying next to the bride all the time. Like, and she ran up by the bride. That she brought the culture. That's what okay. I don't get. <laughs> like that was such a weird thing that, to be like. We would love to have you spice things. Actually, when wedding. she said a Western wedding, be honest. Did you think cowgirl? <laughs> I, I was oh. picturing. <laughs> I just got that. No, I was picturing like fancy, like um, like Jackson Hole. You know, <laughs> like oh. American country Western. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, like that party Sydney Sweeney threw for her da- her like yes. MAGA dad. Do you remember that party? No. Sydney Sweeney was like being dragged. She threw this like very MAGA party what, for her dad. Everyone's wearing like a red hat yeah. and like someone had like a Blue, Blue Lives Matter dragger. shirt on. It was like country oh western. You said upstage the bride at a Western wedding. I thought she wore chaps to a wedding in Jackson Hole. Her ass out. <laughs> yeah. She was oh like, this ain't God. Texas. Ain't no hold em. I fucking love that song. I can't get enough of it. Oh uh, yeah, we love it. Also, I will say that outfit, and you guys can't see it, but it is a lot of fabric. Like I can see it also a bride getting upset that you look half naked at their wedding that's why i said kendall jenner no but Did that's the that best thing about indian culture like as a bra top 
like their culture like it's I it's beautiful it's the best when like when I if I've only been to like one Indian wedding I'm, my boyfriend is also Indian so you know you never know Um, but it's like you're supposed to wear a bra top I'm like I this know. is amazing yeah. but that is so not culturally, it that's a yeah. lot of fabric so you're not showing anybody up in that much fabric I here's the thing I probably wouldn't have chosen that it was like Raina said it's so big it's really kind of ostentatious and then it is giving white vibes but she loved it and she was wanting to go with this neutral theme and then she ran it by the bride and groom so yeah w- you can't really go where can you go from there I don't know I have so many issues for this one and I think that comment was so backhanded I'd love some culture at my wedding first of all ma'am your mother-in-law now is also Indian well, isn't right. the, the, she br- the wore- groom's Indian yeah half or something by the sounds of it. I'm very confused about So the it's like your mother-in-law was also in a sari. That's right. why she kept coming up to our writer here and complimenting her. I think it's because of that. I think there's some weird dynamic Ooh. behind the scenes and OP was just kind of like the one that got the heat because the mother-in-law was so nice to her, complimenting her, mm. took attention away from the bride. You don't think it's color, but you don't think it has anything to do with the color of the outfit. I don't even think that. I think it's kind of this like novelty thing where it's like if it is a Western wedding, you're not used to seeing saris as a part of wedding attire. Like everyone's kind of kind of like fawn and gawk over it. Like I would like Indian wedding culture is so beautiful. We love it. Top top, top tier. My friend Richa is Indian and like she always goes back for weddings and her outfits. I'm just like, I just... I'm so jealous. It's, it's the best. People are breathing down my neck to have like a I want her to have it so bad. And so many of our friends are Indian and we had a bunch of friends that just went to an Indian wedding in, in India, India and like the so outfits dope. are just wild. They're unreal. The jewelry. Also, the brides like don't usually wear white, which I totally. like. I love. And so like you as a guest can wear white. It's like not an totally. issue. Totally. Yeah. I've still seen so when they cool. were like red. Red. I, mean, I think yeah. you're really onto something with just the amount of attention she was receiving. So it was clearly that this bride approved this beforehand. And then she, something got under her skin at her wedding. Yeah. And then she started popping off to her bridesmaids and then everyone just ganged up. Like there's something underlying there for sure. It with, I mean, just the sheer amount of like anyone else getting attention at your wedding. People yeah. get all weird about it. Yeah, I think that like- Have another drink, girl. Like, I do think also in this case, like people say like intent doesn't matter, but like intent in this case really does matter. And her intention was to respect the culture of the groom who that is her friend, right? Like Mm -hmm. she's invited because of him. I think she's like, this is an Indian wedding. I want to respect the culture of the Indian wedding. I asked both people involved. Like her intent does matter. It was meant to be a Western wedding. Western, like, am I? Western, I feel like- I feel like that's kind of just like Western medicine, Western culture. I feel like that's what they mean about like people yeah. in the States here. I oh, just like tr- traditional yeah. Am- West American wedding. I'm so, I oh, really hope Western. It, well, she said the, 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 the bride. So she, oh, Western to her meant just. It was my first Western wedding. The groom's oh, mom right, is right, because she's in it. Sorry, I, I'm all fucked up now. Okay. She just meant like her first non-Indian wedding, maybe. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> this whole time, I really was thinking, <laughs> wait, are we okay? Wait, what? The groom's mom is Indian. He's Indian. No, I know. But right? I am I just, we just fucked ourselves up so Can we bad. start again? Yeah. Um, Tessa, can you restart the camera? <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry. I've got, you know, you hear something for the first time and that's what you think it is and then you just can't change yeah. your, like, it's her first wedding that's not an Indian wedding. Yes. Her I first, like, myself. American white people wedding, <laughs> traditional. Yeah, I'm, I'm just double checking if there's any no, comments that's what from it is. OP. Because I would be really pumped if it was actually a Western wedding <laughs> and people had cowboy hats. It's definitely not. I think I'm going to do that, that though. That whole thing about the neutrals was completely <laughs> out of pocket. <laughs> Well, when you so said sorry. when you said Western, the whole time I'm thinking cowboy hats, and then you said sorry, and I've been fucked up since then. <laughs> <laughs> the chaps. That's where you got the chaps from. <laughs> well, this is just us being stupid. You know, like we're in our heads, we, we didn't hear American wedding, so we weren't thinking. Like we should have known that's yeah. what she meant. And yeah. we are apologizing. Well, I I apologize too. I think you're right. I think the bride did not anticipate that this girl would get so much attention. She got a lot of positive affirmations for what she wore to the Western wedding. And I think she just didn't like it after the fact. And then the bridesmaids got really catty, which feels just like kind of mean and like 
gang mentality. That I, I feel like I need to walk back everything at this point. Like it's just you're changing your mind. This is someone who probably doesn't understand how extreme people take this like can't wear any shade of white thing. So that's why she ran it by these the bride and groom in the first place. Yeah. Like I'm not saying that it's silly. Of course, if you want to wear white at your wedding, you don't want anyone else to. But people get really in the weeds with like anything having a touch of white on it, you know. So I feel like she was just like, I've heard about this thing that like, you know, American people care about and I'm going <laughs> to run it by them. And it would have been so easy for them to then say, so here's how we kind of do it here. And maybe totally. just choose. I don't know. I'm I still think on her it's side on them. Though. I think it's totally. I absolutely. Am. I'm on, still on her side. Yeah. yeah. They, they had an out to tell yes. her not to wear it. Yeah. And two. Not just one, two, but yeah. two. Absolutely. And I'm not really a, like, I'm going to tell people what to do. Like, I wouldn't tell people what to wear to any event except for my wedding. And then I would feel perfectly comfortable saying, like, this is my day. Yeah. This is my day. I'm paying for this. No. Yeah. I'm one. I'm definitely having cowboy hats at my wedding because it's it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be on a farm. So it's going to be great. Oh, perfect. But the top comment does pick up kind of like the mean girl vibes you guys did. It is not the asshole. You just met a school of mean girls. Mm. There is no telling what such people will get up to. I think you had taken every possible precaution totally. with your outfit. In fact, much more than most people would have. Yeah. And OP does respond to them and goes, and that was such a cultural shock for me. Hospitality being one of the highest virtues is an idea that's hammered into us as kids. Not even exaggerating, we're taught, quote, guests are akin to God. So it was unsettling to have the host and her friends Ugh. be so obvious with their disdain. That's half the reason I didn't even react to any of it. The other half being the cultural commonality of it being inappropriate to get confrontational and create a scene at a wedding. Oh, so, I really feel for her. She's in yeah. this outfit at this wedding and people are just being mean to her. I, like, I feel so bad for her. Yeah. Okay. And now I just feel so much more confident that this had to do with like an attention thing. And I think mother-in-law so. and yeah. she really stood out and- you know, she's has a, a connection to the the groom mm -hmm. just being like culturally that. Like, yeah, the maybe there's an insecurity have. there. Yeah, there definitely. Too. And I think, you know, you get all these girls together in a room doing hair and makeup, drinking. It can get really catty. One girl says something. Another girl starts gassing her up. You this know? feels racist. No, I could see it. Could be. It could be an undertone, like some internalized racism. But it's like, again, like if you had a problem with the sari, the color, you had your out. Your mother-in-law is also in a sari. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse. Like, you're also marrying likely an Indian man. Like, mm -hmm. get over it, girl. She get did with the nothing program. wrong. She did every single thing right. No. Yeah. And there's lots of comments from our OP um, clarifying the color is a medium blue-gray. Not close to white or any shade of cream. Sure. Well, can we also say people see dress colors differently? Let's never forget. Black, gold, or black, blue, gold, blue, blue, black, gold, blue, black, white. and yeah, <laughs> gold and white. Color yeah, theory it, is She could just tell terrifying. them, like, you're seeing this the wrong color. Yeah. <laughs> you're not even seeing this for what it is. This dress is purple. <laughs> maybe she, maybe the bride is purple. Gaslight everybody. <laughs> no, but for This real. dress is brown. <laughs> yeah. A lot of other comments, like, I'm Indian, born and brought up American, and I approve of your sari. Mm -hmm. So this bride just is an asshole. Yeah, totally. and it sounds like her friends were just also like gassing her up and being kind of mean. I don't really, I can't relate to it. I don't have friends like this anymore that like are just like mean girls want to tear other people down. I don't like no. it. Like I just, it's not for me. Well, and it's so crazy because unless the bride was lying to her friends that she had approved this, you know what I, I mean? I think she did. She, right. Because definitely. Like, like as, a, as a friend, like you're in the wedding party and my first question would be like, did you know she was going to wear that? You know, like totally. I, she just probably totally omitted that information. Yes. We oh hate her. God, yes. <gasps> You're so right. If yeah. the bride was like, I didn't know anything about this. She lied. Right. All those girls are sitting around just she like being lied. bitches. Yeah. Well, and she like, I don't even know what there's a reason to be upset about either. It's like, she's maybe in a couple pictures and you put her on the right. end. If you want her out of the picture so bad, there's a fucking crop feature. Yeah. I went to a wedding with my ex and the photographer asked him to stand on the end just in case people broke up. I love that. Non-married couples. <laughs> you got to do that. You I have was to. Family terrible. gatherings. You yeah. have to. And we were all making fun of my brother's girlfriend at the time. We're like, you got to get on the end too. And they've been married for seven years and my ex and I broke up. <laughs> we were so, gassing her up. We were like, you got to get on the end of the photo. You're probably not going to be here. I want the everyone in my wedding vibe. to wear white and like beige and I want to wear red. Like the way to stand out Let's to go. me is just like everyone oh, is in. did that red beige and I'm like bam <laughs> like I just I mean that's personal preference and I, I love it I respect people that want to do the whole white thing and you I'm know, considering whatever. putting my bridesmaids in white you are, you are? Mm -hmm. where are you getting married in Minnesota 
Or is that where you're from? Uh, yep, on my family farm. <gasps> what? Like oh. actually a farm, you guys. So like the I cowboy like, house. I have a family farm. Yeah. Oh I'm a, like my family, like my grandfather's a farmer. We, my parents live on one of the farms now. Just a big, nice 300 acre farm. Okay, yeah. you got you got land. <laughs> I know. I want everybody to come there and build houses. Like I picture it like Margaritaville. That's I'm gonna do like I a want. swim up bar. And I feel like I we could rain like and I a could commune. really pitch this. Yeah. Like a commune to get everybody there. Yeah. And okay, we just all grow up. Family together. compound. So you and your fiance here so about you. I was looking at your photos. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So we're it's gonna be on the farm. I'm gonna have like <gasps> carnival games and rides. <gasps> It's gonna it's gonna house? involve hats. So what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want so like a, fun. I I joke like I want a hillbilly hoedown. <laughs> it's a Western theme. That yeah. is amazing. <laughs> She's like as someone who is part of the culture of Western weddings. Look at Sydney Sweeney's dad's <laughs> party for inspo. I'm kidding. I definitely uh, won't go that way. <laughs> but I'm just totally. You kidding. should get a Ferris wheel. I'm going to. What are you saying? Yeah, or either a Ferris wheel or that one ride. It's called the zipper. It goes up and down and just kind of like catapults you. That's insane. People yeah. are throwing you're throwing a carnival. Someone <laughs> 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 like, hit the open bar. You I'm, know, some like uncle is going to be wasted and yeah, throwing up on that carnival ride. Definitely. Just keep me out of Somebody gets fingered on, on the merry-go-round. Yeah, totally. That's my goal. I want a lot of people to fingered. like celebrate love in every way they find appropriate. <sighs> can we come? It sounds so fun. You guys um, can come. Like, <laughs> literally everyone's invited. I'm just this. making it crazy. Likely fall of 2025. Okay. Yeah. You got to set the carnival. It's going to yeah, take some time. It, I got to build right. my venue. What kind of um, farm does your, do they have animals or are they just do we, crops? I grew up with horses. Okay. So it's like a smaller hobby farm, but like there's going to be a petting zoo. So you'll meet some ponies. <gasps> oh my God. Um, maybe a camel. <gasps> so it's, it's going to be a thing. That is so fun. Also, yeah. we like performing there. We could be the entertainment at your show. Okay. <laughs> There we go. We, that would, a show that might upstage the bride. Raina's like, we would love to headline your wedding. <laughs> if you don't mind. I'll, maybe I'll consider it. I, now I'm scared. Also part your of the writer is that good. we have to wear white. I would love to wear white. Yeah. <laughs> I'll oh see what we gosh. can do. Okay. One of this week's partners is Stitch Fix. Finding clothes that make you feel good, excited to put them on, and feeling confident in how you look is really challenging. Or at least it used to be before trying Stitch Fix. With Stitch Fix, you get a stylist who understands your style, size, and budget. And they do all the shopping for you to curate this perfect wardrobe. Things go together. They look good. They make you feel good. They're good quality. And you don't have to struggle through all the shopping or weird stores that don't even have mirrors in their dressing rooms. Stitch Fix makes finding your new favorite outfits easy and not something you cry over because I'm sure we've all been there, right? And one thing I really love about Stitch Fix is they take your personal style into consideration. I was even able to upload pictures I found on social media to my stylist so then they could go through and recreate those outfits and send me pieces that would help me get those looks I was really striving for. And it got sent in a perfect little box, five pieces so it wasn't overwhelming. I could try them on easily in the comfort of my own home with great lighting and mirrors and really know if I love it. But it's okay if you don't love it because Stitch Fix makes it easy to just send right back and shipping, returns, and exchanges always free as they should be. So if you're ready to try it for yourself and get a personalized wardrobe from an amazing stylist, head on over to Stitch Fix. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash THT. That's stitchfix.com slash THT. Stitchfix.com slash THT. HT. This next one is coming from the best of Redditor updates. The original post is pretty vintage. It's coming from 2014. Okay. <gasps> Ooh. Pre Instagram. Oh, we love a deep cut. <laughs> Where were you back then? <laughs> we lived, I lived in New York <laughs> in life. In, yeah. I was my second year of college, University yeah. of Minnesota. Feels like forever ago. Oh, I was like a full grown adult. Um, <laughs> like we're so much older than you. I I was in Atlanta. Okay. And 2014 was the year I started this Instagram account that like totally blew up and it was called bros being basic. And it was just like, it's still I around. It's just kind of wow. defunct, but it got to like close to a million followers. And it was like, I just, that year is very special to me. It's like when I hit something big, you know, like I'd started doing stand up and I was That's blogging crazy. and I was doing social media. I was like it, it, an influencer for lack of a better word, that word wasn't even really a thing at the time. But that was like towards the end of 2014 is when this thing like took off. And I was like, I have the thing, you know, and that was able um, we were able to leverage the podcast and promote it on that account. And I need I, this like, account to make a really hard comeback. I, I, I know. I've thought about sometimes I go back and look. I'm like, damn, that was 
It pretty was good. Dope. Bring yeah, it back. It was pretty good. It Bring was it back. Good. Um, in 2014, I can't remember if it was 2013 or 2014. I worked for Groupon. I worked for a startup that Groupon purchased. So oh I worked in tech. God. And I was engaged. I was going to get married. That? 2014? I can't remember if it was 2013 or 2014. I was engaged. My wedding was happening. And um, I never shit. met Ashley. I didn't even have an Instagram account yet. And <laughs> um, you were. my fiance and I split up. I started this food Instagram account, which like I was one of the first and biggest because it, it wasn't really big food on Instagram at that time. No. Now everybody on earth is a food Instagram party. Right. But yeah, back mine then, was a meme account. Right. It's the same thing. There was like three. It was like fuck Jerry and fat Jewish and betches or whatever. Yes. But anyway. It was weird to oh like take God. photos of your food back then. I remember everybody was annoyed with me all the time. And I was like, you'll see. And I just read a story about a girl who's like taking pictures of food and got her first invite from a restaurant. And her boyfriend was hating on her. So ugh. I'm you're, dumb you're him you're too. A success yep. story. Yep, and that's we met through having these accounts. And exactly. We met on an influencer trip we were invited on because of our accounts. Yeah. Oh, full circle. <laughs> so Thanks for so asking cute. what we were doing in 2014. <laughs> Love that. Holy well, shit. Ten years, that's crazy. Ten years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll research God, wild. Bros being basic 10 years, 10 years later. The 10 year it's anniversary. Time. It's <laughs> time. I would love this. I love that title too. Bros being basic. It was funny. It was like guys mimicking girls. Like it was when, ba so basic came out in 2014. That word, I know it's like so common now in our language, but that was like the first, you know, this was back 2014, BuzzFeed ruled the internet. Yeah. It was the like seventh most popular site in the whole world of the internet. That's so And like crazy. that whole basic started with girls and their PSLs and the Uggs and the scarves and all the things. The hunter so, rainbows. Yes. So that was like, like I did basically had guys kind of like doing all the basic things girls do. And it just kind of like morphed into a meme account. And I worked with brands for years and all that. But it was like, that was the start of it. I absolutely love that. That's so cool. Okay. We're getting, we're getting a little weird with this one. Okay. So it is titled, my boyfriend's sister filled my yard with gnomes. I got rid of them after two months. Boyfriend's furious. So me, 26 female, boyfriend is 27 male. And his sister is 28 female. I'm not sure what to do. My boyfriend's sister, Chrissy, pulled a prank on me two months ago. She left about 50 gnomes <laughs> in my front yard. No warning. They were just there. I called people up and asked them, but no one would tell me. I guess this is a part of the prank. I fucking had no clue what was going on. Eventually, the kids in the neighborhood started picking them off one by one. So I brought them inside of my garage. Two of them were pretty cute, so I cleaned them up and put them in my house. I waited for someone to come clean, but no one did. After three weeks, I decided I was just going to donate them. A few friends asked if they could have some, and I let them. I started giving them to people <laughs> who commented on one being interesting or cute. I told my boyfriend about my army, and he laughed. I thought he might have done it, but he said he honestly didn't, so I believed him. Well, he went on a four-week trip with his family to Europe. I got a few emails from him, but we were both busy. I went on a trip myself for work and for pleasure. So when he got back, he asked how the gnomes were treating me, and I let him know that most of them had found new homes. She rehomed the gnomes. <laughs> Not the rehome the gnomes. <laughs> he got really silent. He got really silent and asked how many I had left. I told him 10. He asked who took them and said we needed to get them back. I was confused. It had been two months and the gnomes were kind of a funny story, but I don't remember everyone who took one, let alone the kids who picked off about 10 from the front lawn. He then told me they belonged to Chrissy, who thought I had just stored them in my garage, which is why she didn't pick them up before the big trip. Chrissy is his sister. Apparently, Chrissy has been pulling the gnome army prank for years, and I am the bitch who gave away her army. My boyfriend is furious with me and asked why I would do that. I told him he should have come clean, and I would have just kept them in my garage for her to pick them up later. He said it wasn't how the prank worked. He said he needs to rethink the relationship now. She needs to rethink the relationship. Do not get into this family. He, I'm so mad. <laughs> he wants me to get them back. <laughs> As they are dear to Chrissy. Fuck Chrissy. Chrissy, Chrissy suck my dick. Chrissy's like, psychotic. Cannot. Chrissy should be with the hype guy. <laughs> yes. Chrissy doesn't know yet. I'm not sure what to do about this. I had a few people offer to return their gnomes, but the rest of the people said they gave them away to so-and-so and didn't know where they were now. 
This is such a surreal situation. I have no fucking clue what to do about it. I don't see how I was wrong, but I feel bad. No. What can I do? I am furious. I am. I feel so mad about this. Like if you prank someone with objects, like 24 hours, get this shit out of here unless someone fesses up and tells you to keep it. That is so crazy. As much as my brain and I also are like New Yorkers at heart, we hate fucking stuff. Get your stuff out of here. The fact that she even put them in the garage. Now you're taking up my space. Like it is such an offense to put all that garbage on some, no offense to the gnomes or whatever, but like to put all that garbage in something that expect them to house it for two months for anything longer than a day. Like I don't understand this fucking prank. Like that's charge rent worthy. (laughs) Right. Like why didn't they tell her before? This is so bizarre. I've never heard of this in my life. You're just going to trash up my front lawn and you think this isn't going into garbage bags and into the trash tomorrow. It would never even occur to me to save that longer than 24 hours. Like under any circumstances, I would laugh. I'd take a few photos. You have junked up my whole house and you have to fess up in 24 to 48 hours. I'm throwing this away. Yes. I can't even imagine having like an actual conversation about this. Like once I threw that away, if my boyfriend was like, I can't believe that was my sister's. And I'd be like, you take it up with her then. Like, is Don't this even a- talk to me about this. Is this a test? Are they testing her? Like, what is this weirdo fucking family? Like the gnome thing is whack as hell, but it's fine. We were and I were talking about this. Like people do different things. They like to prank. They like to play tricks. It's like, I hate and you, pranks. Right. But like Ugh. you find some, your partner that does, you find friends that are into it. It's like, whatever, live your truth. But if that was like <laughs> my boyfriend's weirdo fucking sister and she, this is what she does. Fine. And it's all play into it. But to expect me to keep them, this is honestly so unhinged. And I would absolutely be like done with that relationship. The only way that that this relationship could be saved is if my, if my boyfriend was like, she's a fucking nut job and I feel you on this. And he was like on my side about it. But if he's taking her side and is like, you got to do the legwork now to get these gnomes back. I'd be like, this is over. I don't even, I I totally agree with you. I don't even know what she's being accused of. Like, (laughs) do you know what I mean? Like what on the grounds of what? Like she is wasteful. She, she's an asshole. She's not a hoarder. And he would like her to be more of one. Like what, what, what is he mad at her about on the grounds of what i think giving away the gnomes without permission but the the thing is with this there was a timeline when it was appropriate to notify like hey this was a prank it was definitely the 24 to 48 hour window before they started disappearing or yeah it became a big issue but two months later that's when this becomes like hey you abandoned your property after a certain <laughs> number of days <laughs> it is now mine to like get rid of. I'm not sending one text message on behalf of this prank. I am not asking one person for the gnomes back. You know me. I like my house to look like no one's ever lived there. I want it to look like I moved in It's today. a hotel room. Well, also, let me... Th- so <laughs> it's a hotel. Her, not a house. Her, her and her partner, I would assume, you know, most relationships talk about what's going on in your life. Like there's absolutely no way they didn't have conversations about these fucking gnomes in those two months where the boyfriend could have been like, Chrissy, listen, I think she's trying to get rid of these gnomes. You know, like she's <laughs> like, she had to have been telling her boyfriend that got these gnomes in the yard. A couple kids are taking them. Now they're in the garage. Like all these opportunities for her brother to step in. Yeah. Or sorry, for her boyfriend to step in on behalf of his sister. Yeah. It also sounds like they're not that communicative. He went on a month long trip to Europe with his family, which they sound rich. And and can you imagine like spending a weirdo, month rich with your people. family? It's so weird. This is so Europe. weirdo, rich people, these Ew. fucking gnomes. All and of it. Also, if you can afford a month long trip with multiple of your kids in Europe, you can afford more gnomes. So, just this isn't a money issue, but she said that she didn't hear from him that much. Like, over the yeah. month, a couple of emails. Like, I oh, like, right. I need so much attention. It's unbelievable. If I'm dating you, it is text message, text message. We're laughing about the gnomes. Like, it sounds like he's not mm. even that communicative with her in the first place. That. And even when he was approached and said, hey, like, you know, these gnomes are disappearing from the front yard. Kids are stealing them. Did you do it? Like, seriously, like, did you do it? Yeah. He said, I honestly didn't. Yeah. If you knew that your sister pulled this prank. And was going to want them back. And was going to want them back. And it was like a recurring thing. So she needs her gnomes. Right. It's like a thing. You better come clean right now. Yeah. Hey, I really didn't do it. But Chrissy did. Just don't tell her. Yeah. It's a part of her thing. Just put him in the garage. Right. This is Chrissy so, did. Like this is yeah. your partner. The Have OP their back. Is so far from the asshole here. Like just she tried so hard to get to the bottom of this. She has gone above and beyond with these fucking gnomes. 
Like, my, this is crazy to me. I, you know, Rain and I would call a fucking garbage disposal person <laughs> after 48 hours, get this shit out of my yard, take it to the dump. Like, I, just, I get it out of here. This is so crazy to prank someone where you are creating work for them. Yeah. Where they have to clean your shit up. Totally. You know. You know what I just discovered recently that I love? Curb alert. I have posted so many curb alerts to get rid of the craziest shit. I had like oh. a drawer, a drawer for an Ikea packs from Ikea, like I, I, Ikea. Okay. And I didn't want to throw it away. It felt wasteful. So I posted it on offer up, said curb alert. Here's the address. It disappeared in 20 minutes. You just put it outside. Oh, I love that. You just that. put it outside okay. and then it's going to like good homes, but you're not throwing it away. She could have curb alerted. A hundred percent. Totally. Like, yeah. And that would have been fair. But you guys, we have an update. Oh my God. We have an update. 10 years later. I'm so excited. <laughs> By the way, can I say one more thing? Yeah. I would just be at an impasse with my partner. Yeah. I would just be like, this is going to be a five minute conversation and this is the end of it. Okay. So I'm very excited just for, wait. The, for the update. What? Just wait. I'm not ready. I just got chills. I'm so, <laughs> so the top comment on the original post, they have no reason to try and hold you accountable for not following the unreasonable rules of the game you didn't even know about. Mm -hmm. Give back the gnomes you have, but don't feel like you have to Oh my God, this is such a big word. Acquiescence. Acquiesce. Acquiesce. Thank you. <laughs> and go out of your way to try to recover the gnomes that are lost. That's not your business. They left a bunch of stuff on somebody else's property, unannounced and unidentified. And you shouldn't be blamed for cleaning up your property. Same rational yeah, thought we rational, had. Yeah. OP goes, I am willing to give back the ones I have and have gotten three back from other people. I cannot believe so the update is coming about 12 days later. I decided to bite the bullet and talk to Chrissy. I brought the gnomes I had to her house and knocked on the door. Chrissy's mom answered and asked me to come in. <laughs> I was tired of the immaturity and mind games. My boyfriend had been sending me threatening, quote, get me more gnomes, bitch, type text. I could see a lot of red flags or red hats, if you are so inclined. I wanted Chrissy to have her gnomes back and just get it over with. When I handed Mrs. Mom the open box, she asked where I got these. She seemed really upset I even had them. <gasps> I told her the story, pretty much what I said in the post, but with some more detail. Her reply was, Joe has been telling a totally different story. Uh, Joe's the boyfriend. Uh, chills. She seemed really hurt about the whole thing, and while I wanted to make a quick getaway— I was fucking curious. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Mrs. Mom told me a little bit of the background. I'm not going to repeat everything she said because some of it is sad and pathetic and a little too dark for a post about a gnome invasion. The gnome <laughs> army belonged to Chrissy's late boyfriend, Steve. Oh Steve God. and Chrissy used to put them in people's yards and then demand another member for their army. So the gnomes came from people Steve and Chrissy knew over a period of about five years. Steve passed away. Chrissy stopped the gnome pranks and put them into storage. She has not pulled the prank in almost two years now, but freaks out if someone mentions getting rid of the gnomes or even moving the box. I felt like an asshole, but Mrs. Mom thanked me for bringing some of them back. She did say the annoying line, you should have kept them even if you didn't know who they belonged to. She did say she was going to replace the gnomes in the boxes with other ones and hope Chrissy didn't notice. Not sure that was a smart idea. She said she wanted to believe me, but that this is likely the last time she would want me in her house. Uh, Gee, thanks. All the more reason for the boyfriend to have stopped her from throwing... Th this is all his fault. But, but Chrissy did do the gnome prank, right? She mm -hmm. just kind of... She got back in the game after no, two years. no. The, nope. the boyfriend do the gnome prank. That's what I'm saying. Yep. They, what? Chrissy didn't do it. Right? Chrissy didn't do it. I said that was fine. I had no intention of staying in a family who pulled weird pranks, then blamed the victims. One bridge burned. <laughs> I mean, I understand she is likely upset because Chrissy apparently doesn't handle any mention of Steve well. She is likely going to be upset and never speak to the person at fault again, which is likely me. How I got them out of storage unit three hours away? Question mark, question mark. The mystery will likely haunt their family for years. As for my now ex-boyfriend, I went to his house and asked him why he pulled the prank. His answer was stupid and telling. I don't know. Oh, okay. He wouldn't answer me and he wouldn't tell me what was going on. He said he just wanted to do something cute. Then it got out of hand and he thought I would keep them. Something about having his own little secret made him happy. 
This is so weird. I got my things from his room and left. I told him that our mutual friend Jake would bring his stuff by at a later time. Jake agreed to this and said Joe's story was bullshit. I guess Joe told people I got the gnomes out of storage and put them in the yard to get attention. That totally makes sense, right? I guess it was spiteful to do, but I sent Chrissy a message on Facebook. Chrissy, I don't think we'll be friends after this. I know you want to believe your brother, but I did not take your gnomes. I did not know that they were in my yard or even that you had them. Please understand, I would never aim to hurt, steal, or take from you. Your brother admitted to putting them in my yard, though I have no idea why he did it. I got an okay back, and then she blocked me. I blocked Joe and his family. I'm not sure what to do now, but it has been a really interesting few weeks for sure. Where is Netflix with this documentary? I am riveted. Joe is a fucking psycho. This is crazy. Like, if he turns out to be a serial killer, I would not be surprised. That is sick. Like, it's so sick because, like, those were sentimental to Chrissy's late boyfriend. And he just was all willy-nilly with him in the first place when he took him out of storage. Like, I am so sickened by this this is like the only thing she had listen it's stupid because we're talking about no but like no 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 this is like what she had left of her relationship and the person that she loved and he created a situation in which his girlfriend gave them away and he could have stopped her at any point yeah at any point at at two months like this guy's really scary Yes. And really fucked up and has like issues. I think that he did as he thought it would be funny. But and what, on and what grounds? Like, I, it's so crazy. It's so sick and so weird. I don't know why he thinks this would be funny, but like he thinks it'd be funny and he's already made up the lie. As soon as he came out of his mouth that it was Chrissy that did it, now he's like in the lie, can't back out of it. And to keep doubling down is so sick and so crazy. And when I found out that somebody had given these away, I would have to be like, I gotta come clean. Well, it's so, it's so nuts brutal. to even tamper with something that sentimental. Like you, Raina, you know me. That, like no my one heart is dropped out. Like I'm her. literally thinking if my boyfriend died and like we had these things, yeah. you know, and like they, I, I don't, you can't touch them. You can't touch those gnomes. Like that's so crazy. It makes me feel sick that somebody would like touch anything of mine that was a sentimental thing that somebody who passed away in my life had given me. Well, and- I feel like sick about it for the sister. And then she has this uh, shitty fucking brother who she believes- they're so but, 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 but hold on but like what what do you mean believe like what how else would this girl have gotten the gnomes like Chrissy has to know the brother did it I don't think Chrissy believes our writer here I think Chrissy genuinely believes Locker. that this person was out to hurt them that's why she gave the gnomes away but they the were thing, in a storage unit they were in a storage unit three hours away how would this girl have gotten into even known of its existence she didn't even know about the, the gnomes otherwise you would have known who the prank was done by. Well, all I'm saying is Chrissy has to know that the brother did it. Like, how else? She didn't break into the story. I don't That's know. That's what I'm saying. Like, how else would she have known about the existence of this, where it was, or how to yeah, get Yeah, like, the brother is still at fault for touching him and doing this in the first place. But what I don't know. The brother definitely has a screw loose. And, like, here's what's so sad about this. He knew the background. He mm. knew that this was Chrissy and Steve's thing. They dated for at least five years because that's how long they collected the gnomes, but they could have been together longer. After five years of being with someone, you probably plan on marrying them. So she lost the love of her life. Yeah, no. He then, knowing this and how sentimental they were, broke into the storage unit, put them out on a front lawn. People's dogs get stolen out of front yards. What about a fucking gnome that's not chained or tied up or anything? Right. And it's very ostentatious. You see 50 of them. You're stopping. You're looking. I mean, the kids started running off with them. Like, these are uncontrollable external variables that you didn't account for, that you didn't even, like, rationalize. Like, hope for the best, but expect the worst, dude. So you just intentionally hurt your sister, no matter how funny or fun you wanted this to be. I'm just trying to even envision like a mother son relationship in which the mother is just like, I don't basically, I don't believe you and get out of this house. Yeah. Like how would this girl have come by this box of gnomes without your son walking her to them? Come on, come on. Let's put two and two together. Mm. It's crazy. I just, I, I was not kidding where I said Netflix should cover this. We know the guys who made Tiger King. And so honestly, we should stick them on these gnomes people. Yeah. Well, I just hope this gets back to Chrissy. Like, granted, this is 10 years old now. Chrissy, but what if Chrissy listening? is still out there thinking that her brother didn't do this? 
What if Chrissy is listening right now? Chrissy, if you're out there, I'm sorry about what we said before where I told you to suck my dick. You didn't know. We didn't know. I know. We didn't know. We didn't know. know. We didn't know. But, but I, now, obviously, we. I, I just, what she dealt with, like, things like that, like, keep me up at night. Like, I don't think there are many things worse than, like, losing a partner that you were, like, you lose your whole, you know, the life that you thought you were, were going to live. So, yeah. I mean. What if you lost me? <laughs> I think about you dying all the time. I don't know. This is really I think kind about of a struggle dying to be in this daily. <laughs> Not, I never use the word struggle. I knew this was going to come up again. So it's hard to be in business with anybody for six years, and I stand by it. Except Ashley is what you should have said. <laughs> Except Ashley. I am really blessed. I'm it is totally tough. kidding. And um, I do appreciate every day. We're going to have a fight as soon as we leave. No, we're no not. you guys no. are so close. No, we we're are so close. I don't care at all. She's a dream business partner. Um, no, I'm a bitch. I, <laughs> yeah, but that's good sometimes. All right. Anyway, yeah, no, everyone Chrissy, needs the good listening. cop, bad cop. So you you balance. I like when I get to be bad cops. No Raina one does bad cop more than you think because I think you people seem think it's coming scrappy. from me. You I looked scrappy. the team up yesterday and I was oh, it felt good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't explain it to me now, but Monday you will. Um, no, anyways, I I think if this girl, if Chrissy was so willing to not. I think if Chrissy thought this girl was lying then, she's going to think the girl's lying now. The girl, like, nothing has changed, essentially. Like, she, yeah. seeing it on Reddit is not going to change my opinion if I am so sold on the fact that my brother is honest. But, like, Chrissy's dealing with a lot, you know? Yeah. And she doesn't know when to believe this about her brother. You know, a lot of it's just, like, I can't handle Maybe this mentally. right now. Like, I don't want to, well, I don't want to think that my brother would do something this disgusting mm. I don't know why like I just gotta not I, I I for me to move on like I've lost my partner I don't want to lose my brother or you know the image of him like I she's probably just like I can't fucking deal with this and I yeah it may it might not even be that it might not even be like this girl's a liar I'm blocking her it might just be like I don't have the capacity to think about my brother doing something like this right and yeah, I have I to remember that. so the he's 27 right in this scenario, I, I think everybody was like 26, 27, 28. So if you yeah. told me that like this was a 16 year old boy who didn't really understand like the ramifications of their mm -hmm. actions in the world and they're just doing shit to do shit, I mm -hmm. could I couldn't understand it. But I guess I could be like, ah, uh, more. I see how maybe this yeah. could happen. But and then, you know, you know, when you're in high school, you're like, oh, my God, I did this thing. My life is over. and I do not know how to get out of it. I'm just going to lie to get out of it. You know, but this, right. these are adults that He's really, 27. they right. understand yeah. the ramifications of their actions at this point. Yeah, there's no excuse. I hope she's doing better now. But mm -hmm. I think that was probably mental preservation. Like, I just can't take one more thing. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's, it's call. done. I can't hate my brother the rest of my life. Right. So, like, I'm just, you know, ignorance is bliss. I'm going to blame this girl. And and. Honestly, that's like a totally understandable emotion is like, mm -hmm. I cannot hate my brother. I am going to hate you. And I yeah. think a lot of people would go that road. Yeah. So unfortunately. <sighs> moving along. Okay. We're going to lighten this next one up a little okay. bit. Okay, good. Okay, moving along to another one of this week's partners, Next Devo. Am I the asshole for hiding my CBD gummies so my fiance stops eating them all? I'm going to go ahead and assume your answer is no, because you understand why I'm doing this, because these gummies are so good and they help me get good quality sleep where I feel rested the next day and like I didn't just get hit by a truck. And if you are saying you're the asshole, I think it's just because you haven't tried Nextevo and found out how good they are. Nextevo are the CBD experts. Their products work fast and are proven to absorb 30 times better in the first 10 minutes, which is four times better than most oil-based products on the market. And they don't just have gummies. They've got capsules, dissolvable powders, and even creams. So stop sacrificing quality sleep or being stressed out all the time and give Next Evo a try. So don't be the a-hole. Try more effective and fast-acting CBD from Next Evo. Get a free full-size CBD recovery cream and up to 60% off as a new subscriber using code THT at nextevo.com. That's N-E-X-T-E-V-O dot com promo code THT. Do you guys ever fight about who the it girl is? I mean, we've talked about having to make decisions 50-50, but... Between us? Yeah. Is there anyone no. that maybe gets 51% or is it... I think we both are it girls in our own right. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. We don't... People don't even compare us. We're like a foot, foot I'm apart. I'm a foot shorter you know, her. I have like, huge boobs. We're she has different. long legs. Yeah. I think we each have our own thing. We've never been like attracted to the same guy. Like oh, yeah. That's happens. what keeps that's us nice. best friends. I mean, I find her boyfriend really attractive. 
he is a very handsome man, but yeah. we've never been attracted to the handsome man. <laughs> well, <laughs> here we go now. <laughs> we have completely different tastes. I honestly think it's like the number one quality of best friends. It's the cornerstone of our relationship. <laughs> never wanted to fuck the same person. I like that. One time. Like- one time, but we didn't really, listen, that's just from afar. Mm. But I did fuck him. She did fuck him. <laughs> And I've never gotten over it. And that is why today, that is why today it's been really hard being in business with her all this year. Because she fucks up guy in February of 2022 and I'm still mad about it. Oh my God, it's the two year anniversary. (laughs) Can you imagine? It was like right now, it was around Valentine's Day. Mm, it was around this time, yeah. It was my God. I had some other tale though, so it's fine. Not the tale. (laughs) It's all good. Okay. okay, so this next one is titled, Am I the Asshole for Telling My Sister She is No Longer the It Girl? <laughs> sister, though. Sister relation. I don't want it. Are you, what, what are your siblings? I have uh, an older brother, a younger brother, and younger sister. Oh my gosh. Ooh. But we have like a weird household. Like my sister is from my dad and my brothers are from my mom. Got it. Like we all have different thing. dads and it's just like a f- <laughs> clusterfuck of okay, a family okay. tree. How much older are you than the sister? Eight years. Okay. I think, it, you know, you have that those issues when you're really close in age. My yeah. sister-in-law and her sister are like two years apart. Oh, and I'm like, no. I would not want that. We don't have issues. So I, 25 female, have a sister, 30 female. We are from a small town where everyone knows each other. When we were younger, she was the it girl of our town. She was really pretty, social, well-liked by everyone in general. I was the opposite. I looked like Dobby from Harry Potter. I was extremely skinny, had crooked teeth, frizzy hair, and a huge nose. Really grotesque to look at in general. No, I'm sure that's not true. Yeah. When people saw us together, they would get really surprised. They would often ask us whether we have the same dad or not. On top of that, I always felt like my sister was ashamed of me. She never wanted to take me anywhere or wouldn't like being seen with me. She even told me it's because people ask her questions about me. The thing that really annoyed me was when her friends would make fun of me. They would often call me the little goblin, and my sister would never stick up for me. What the fuck? (laughs) She's she's really describing her ugliness like a disability. I mean, she's really like, this is hindered by life. Like, I'm so ugly, you guys wouldn't believe it. I, I like I gotta see the picture. Like I said, was it that bad? Their photos? I don't know yet. Like the sister won't even blame you. No, that's bad. If, if she has some, I'm ready for the glow up. Is she a comedian now? I bet she's funny. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, since I knew from a young age people wouldn't like me for my looks, I always worked hard on my grades. I went to a good university. Then I worked on my looks. I gained weight. Got a hair care routine, mm. got a nose job, Oof, and got braces. It's the nose job. Oh my God. Now I look seven out of 10. My sister's life, on the other hand, <laughs> didn't go so well. She went to university, dropped out, got married and divorced, and moved back at home and works in a market. She also gained a lot of weight because of the stress. This summer, she called me asking whether she could come and stay with me and my fiance for a while. She told me that she cannot live with my mom anymore and there is nothing to do in our small town. I agreed, and she started living with us. The issue is, whenever she gets the chance, she talks about our past. She says how much I changed myself and tells everyone my looks weren't always great. And the other day, we were out with my friends, and she did it again. But she also showed the most unflattering childhood picture of me, and people started laughing. Oh, no. I don't know what happened, but I started seeing red. I told her she also looks really different now, like 40 pounds heavier. (laughs) She is also no longer the it girl, so she should stop acting that way. She is the girl who lives at her sister's house rent-free and tries to embarrass her. We are currently not talking. So Reddit, am I the asshole? I like feel for the sister so much because like so much of her confidence was tied to having this identity and it's like no longer there anymore. And then you have this person, the closest person to you that like has assumed that identity almost and like has a fiance and you're divorced. Like I get it, but that you have to go to therapy and understand that other people can't be the target of that. No, Mm -hmm. that's karma. Fuck this. She wouldn't claim her all the time. Like when she, they were sisters when they were younger. No, this is exactly what she gets. I love this story. Letting, I don't feel for her at all. Like no. this is what this is what you get. You should have been a better sister. But I mean, it's it's all, all of it tracks, you know, like every single thing about this. Like that's all she has left. She's so 
she's got to be so jealous of the younger sister. Yeah. And so all she has when they're like out with the friends is to like embarrass her and remind people that she used to be ugly and remind people that she used to be the hot sister. I mean, it's giving very like, you know, person who peaked in high school energy. You know, it's yeah. giving Uncle Rico, like I could throw the ball over those mountains. You know, like I used to be hot too. And now I'm just like, you know, <laughs> loser who lives with my younger sister. Who, yeah. You know, not that it's like losery to have to move back in with somebody and get divorced. That's no. not what I'm saying. But clearly that's how she feels about herself. Yeah. So she's projecting that onto her younger sister. And I just, I want to give props to this younger sister. I mean, it it's so sad to go through life, you know, being bullied for your looks and to, when you're younger and it affects people in in such a in such a way and for her to be like where she is now and she's feeling confident and she's engaged or married or whatever I mean it's just I want to give props to her and I, she probably I, I'm sure she has she's smart and aware enough to realize like what's happening here yeah I think so but you can tell there's still like a little bit of a chip on her shoulder like she's still very self-conscious like mm. to say like I'm a seven out of ten yeah like it that's still sad to that's hear still that. sad yeah but like I I would see red too like I think this is so frustrating when you move to a new city you create this new life this new identity for yourself you're trying to embrace mm -hmm. your confidence and all of these things and then your sister pulls up the most grotesque, unflattering picture mm -hmm. and your friends start laughing. Yeah. I You're would be right like, back I, to where you were. Uh, right. It's re-triggering from when you were a child. Right. And, you know, it isn't like some random person doing it, in which case I'd be like, I don't care about this. It's your family. They're supposed to be protective of you. And I'd be like, I see what you're doing here. You're only embarrassing yourself, by the way. Mm -hmm. You look stupid by trying to make me look stupid. Mm -hmm. You're just hanging on to like how you used to look. Well, joke's on you. You don't look like that anymore. <laughs> Go off. <laughs> I just, I can, I under, like they say when you are really heavy and you lose a lot of weight that you're still always that fat person. You mm -hmm. never lose the feeling inside of being right. that like ugly girl when you were little. And so this is probably very triggering for her. It made me sad when she said she was a seven because also looks don't matter. And on top of that, like, it sounds like she built a great life for herself. Yeah. And I'm not trying to have the person supposed to stand up for me trying to humiliate me to other people and you're shopping this photo around. Then what? People are supposed to think what about me? I was an ugly kid. Who cares? Well, so I don't care about stuff like that. Like if people pull up ugly photos of me. I think it's like very yeah. funny, but it clearly it was so traumatic. It was you know what also I mean? meant to, it's, the, the, the intention. Yeah. yeah. Like if you, you know, must not have very many ugly pictures of you. I do. I, oh, we both do. I just don't, I don't, I don't, I knew that I was like, I got I talk about all the time that I was like an ugly kid and like well, all this stuff. And I think it depends on who's showing that type of thing. Like my brother will pull okay. photos of his wife because he thinks <laughs> oh she's, the, she's the most beautiful. He thinks she's, she, so she's the most beautiful woman in the world, but she has had a glow up. So he'll be like, <laughs> look at Steph. And he's like making fun and Steph's laughing too. Like I think looking at people because also the time we grew up, we just didn't have the things that kids have the luxury of today. Like we were all so busted, you know, and like I'll, it's I'll unreal. show pictures of my old face, my old nose, and I'll be like, oh my God. And then my friends are like, it wasn't that bad. I'm like, well, you can say it's bad. Like I'm making fun mm -hmm. of myself too, but I wasn't that traumatized. Like yeah. those old photos are so re-traumatizing for her. They're not like a funny thing to laugh and joke about. No. She clearly does not have a good sense of humor about it yet or if if ever, which is also totally understandable. So yeah. And the intention is to embarrass yes, her. Like exactly. when yes. your brother is showing those photos of his wife who is a smoke show, it's out of love. It's funny. Everyone's yeah. in. She's in on the joke. Totally. You know, this is meant to make me feel bad. And you're using something I already feel bad about to mm -hmm. make me feel bad. Yeah. I mean, if I got called Dobby and Goblin and my sister didn't oh, defend no. me and then is then like bringing it up with old pictures, like I got some really bad old pictures and I'm like, I'm a horse girl. So like, <laughs> I was a weird child. So like if that got brought up now and people started laughing, I'd, I'd cry. Like it just, it, this is not a safe space to like laugh together. And it's yeah. clearly coming from a place of ill intention. Well, and it's yeah. crazy that the sister is doing this knowing how she treated her when they were younger. You know, like she is just doubling down. Like you think when you know you treated your sibling so poorly when you were younger. Like, you'd always be trying to make amends. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, like, the exact opposite of what yeah. you'd be doing. Yeah. I know these two girls. Um, The sister is two to three years younger than the – than the friend that my friend is two to three years younger. She is, by all accounts, prettier, more likable, has a great marriage. The older sister – not those things. Mm -hmm. And the older sister, I see her pick on her all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. And she takes the bait every single time. But oh. I think it's just like really triggering from like how they grew up. Because I'm just like, how are you taking the bait from this bullshit for? Yeah. It's crazy. But mm -hmm. like, 
these family dynamics are hard to stray from. And if you've like been in this for your whole life, it's hard to like act like you don't care. And it's so easy to take the bait when it's right in front when, of you. Well, really in your is. family. Yeah. Like they just – family, I feel like, gets to you in a different way. They yeah. trigger you in a whole different way. Like yeah. we always say there's like – someone could say something or do something to you and your family member or your close friend would do it. And it just hits completely different. Oh, yeah. So lots of comments on this Ooh, one. Yeah, I want to see yeah. what people are saying. Obviously, overall vote, not the asshole. Yeah. Did get some you're the asshole comments though, but – People were quick to chime in and just be like, you're doing your sister a favor by letting her stay with you and your fiance. For her to make passive aggressive comments and try to belittle you in front of your friends is completely out of line. You are completely justified in calling her out and putting her in her place following such remarks. And to be clear, OP, I hope you recognize that your sister is only saying these things because she is jealous of you. Yeah. How attractive or popular you were or were not in adolescence has absolutely no bearing on your life now as an adult. Your social status in high school only matters while you are in high school. For your sister to even care enough to bring that up now as an adult is nothing short of pathetic. You were right to call her out on that, and I hope you are enjoying living your best life as an adult, which is what really counts. Yeah, and I hope she knows, I hope younger sister knows that it is out of jealousy and can get to a place where she just feels bad you know you like feel sympathy for those people yeah because you know where it's coming from and you know you would never act like that and you get to pat yourself on the back and be like you know how far she's fallen from grace you know and have some sympathy and almost like some some pity actually and just know that it has nothing to do with her it has everything to do with her sister absolutely yeah. I do have sympathy for the sister and what has happened to her I don't have sympathy for how she's behaving like yeah what's that quote how you are is not your fault but it is your responsibility or what's Ooh. happened to you is not your fault but it is your responsibility yeah. like I feel bad for her that she's like a lot of my currency in the world revolved around how I looked and I don't have that anymore and I understand being bitter about that and feeling yeah. really bad about the hand that life dealt you but Anything past that, being unkind to other people because of that, I don't understand. Yeah, and OP does make a comment. The thing is, my sister is not ugly now. She is still very pretty, but just chubbier. And I think there's what, like a, probably the majority of us out there. I'm not as tiny as I was in high school. Yeah. Do I let that change how I treat people? Do I belittle right. people? Like, no, gaining, gaining 30 pounds or 40 pounds. Honestly, I've probably gained like 50 pounds since high school. Like, that doesn't change who I am as a person unless you make it your whole identity and then you are just a bitch to everyone because of it. Yeah. And Grow to up. me, like the I kind of didn't even the weight thing was less on my radar as the divorce, having to move yeah, back in true. with your little sister. Yeah. You know, as like she's clearly got some even chips. take the weight out of it. She's just feeling so down and down on herself and so insecure. Yeah. Come, like all around. Definitely. Whew. Well. Hopefully she gets over it, gets over the hump, gets back on her feet, yeah, doesn't live with sister. <laughs> I get so invested in these and I need updates and I, I want to say, like, I need to, this is almost why I don't like, um, I can't handle some like mysteries and true crimes if they're like unsolved. Like Raina will tell me, she's like, you're not going to like it because they don't like button it up at the end. Unsolved mysteries? I Remember they unsolved. released that? <laughs> I was like, this is bullshit. I can't do the unsolved ones. I like need to have a conclusion. I'm the person though, like. I skip to the end of the movie or like the <laughs> book sometimes or I'll Google it mid movie because it's just like I need to know. I feel like I've not found like my soulmate in this world <sighs> like this before. And like I'm reading this book. It's called 20 Years Later. And I saw that the last two pages, they like explain how the murder went down. You skipped. And mm -hmm. I know I have not. And it's been the hardest thing for me to I'm do so in my entire life because I will read the last page of a book all the time. Morgan, she's your... You're Raina's soulmate now. She hadn't found it until now, even yeah. though she told me it was me. Television I soulmate. I never, we are not television soulmates. <laughs> and you know that. You don't like The Sopranos or Bad Men or The Office. Oh, television soulmate. <laughs> no, I, I don't like it. Raina loves a spoiler. And I I don't. I like, I think there's not a lot of surprises left in life. So I really do. <laughs> yeah. um, Tessa, our assistant, um, what did you say? Was it Love is Blind? We were all texting about Love is Blind the yeah. other night. And I texted Ashley and I go, don't read what Tessa just said. She sent a spoiler. Uh, yeah. Well, and Tessa's also like, so, so she knows everything. She's a spoiler queen so she has them all locked and loaded so That's if you want to know anything she's like i've already checked the marriage licenses for this state <laughs> you know like she knows every yeah. like and she knows the bachelor oh God, she a little reads sleuth. all the yeah she, i think different generation so <laughs> reyna can go to her if she you don't need to read the gossip blogs you just yeah. go to tessa i do just go to tessa i'm like voice noting her about this stuff and i'm like yeah. do not oh talk about this God. in front of me incredible i accidentally give a lot of spoilers so i i try not to do that but another one if you really want to test your ability to 
not guess everything that's going on and be surprised at the ending. Don't skip ahead. Do not skip ahead. Fool me once on Netflix. Wait, did I see that? It's a little cheesy. It's like- I stopped watching it. It, it gets- The husband kind of like comes back. She sees him on the camera. Yeah. I stopped watching it after oh, one episode. Stop watching that. It did gets, you like it? It gets good. It was it cheesy. The it was first, a little corny. It's definitely like a cheesy production editing. Uh-huh. But like- Okay. You get into it. I like a thriller. Yeah. Well, you were talking with Hannah on your episode about American Nightmare, which was like we were so obsessed good. with. And it, they really did button everything up. And they even- you know, for lack of uh, clearly what happened to these people was like a true nightmare. So traumatic, but it, th there was like a little bit of a happy ending at the end. Like that was actually my, I don't really do a lot of crime. That stuff kind of keeps me up at night. I live alone. So things like that scare me, but they were able to kind of really package it in a way that yeah. felt like palatable and not like too terrifying. And I like yeah. ended it on feeling like more positive than, than most. And it then also so it was good. completely all wrapped up in like what happened. So that's like where um, I can and only, do that. Only do three that. parts, I think, right? It was yeah. Like only yeah. Three yeah. It was pretty short. Watch. I watched it at night by myself, which I would not recommend. It was terrifying. <laughs> but they do button it up really nicely at the end. And then what is it? Um, Lover, Stalker, Killer on yeah. Netflix that just Ooh. came out. I, it's Wait, so am I going to like that? Isn't the woman like a stalker? It's She's a stalker. It is it's so scary, scary. even though it's a woman? Well, here's the thing. I started watching Women it. I'm so scared. Scary. Yeah, the guy is not getting stalked. Because they're, I think they're smarter. Like, but I'm not scared of them. Yeah, but so she's like- bringing, I get scared of stuff that I feel home. like could happen to me. That's where I get. It felt mm. very- She's breaking to his home. She's like slicing his clothing <gasps> off with a knife. I'm not stuff. scared. That wouldn't happen. Like, I'm saying, if I can't put myself in those shoes- It could happen to you. I think it could. I think it could. You never know! Okay, one last one for us. It is causing a stir online. Okay. Everyone has been telling me to read it. Okay. I was, I'm just really baffled by this one. Are these the best ones you've ever done? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> what, the, everyone has been so, and like, it's just I, so I, good. They're all so good. You do a great job. Like your show's amazing. But like these, I don't know. Thank you. This is really I do. Fun. I really stress over the stories I pick for my guests, especially like, because I only get you guys usually for one episode. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I got to really pack a punch in and like bring the heat. You do a great job. Thank you. Yeah. This next one, it's it's really, I think it's going to okay. be the icing on the cake. Okay. Oh my God. So it's coming from AITH, another version of Am I the Asshole? 11 days old, titled, Am I the Asshole for Kicking My Wife Out After She Punched My Mom in the Face? <laughs> For some reason, like, what'd your mom do? Imme my immediate re gut reaction is no. My immediate, re <laughs> my, my immediate gut reaction is the mother in law deserved it. But let's see. Let's see. My situation went from bad to worse in a matter of a week, and I don't know where else to turn. I need to know if I was wrong. Possibly a validation thing because life is fucking dumb right now. My wife and I have been together for eight years, and she just gave birth to our first and last baby two months ago. Up until my wife got pregnant, my mom loved her. I'm not sure what the fuck is going on with my mom or why the switch happened, but after my wife got pregnant, my mom started being very clingy to me and started avoiding my wife at all costs. Told everyone she wasn't excited about the pregnancy, etc. I threatened to go no contact with her when my wife was about seven months along, and after that, she snapped out of it for the most part and stopped being so ignorant. The comments 100% stopped, at least though she was still clinging to me. Now, a week ago, my mom, my sister, my sister's husband, and my sister's daughter, 12, came over for dinner. I prepared the meal. Before my wife could eat anything, our daughter got fussy, so my wife excused herself to go feed the baby and get her down to sleep. I thought I prepared enough, but apparently not, because my niece was still starving. Parentheses, she's 5'5 and 190 pounds, I haven't seen her in a year, and she was not that size then, so I didn't exactly portion in an extra three helpings for a child. So that's on me. <laughs> is, that like, is that just like, an, like a snarky remark? I don't she know what the for fuck four. that was. <laughs> I apologized and told her that I hadn't made any more and offered her crackers as I was putting my <laughs> wife's portion into the fridge. After that, I just went outside with my sister's husband to smoke a cigarette and shoot the breeze. Didn't think anything of it. But then I hear yelling from inside. When I walk in, my wife and my mom were screaming at each other. Apparently, my mom, who saw me put my wife's food away, gave my niece my wife's portion of food. As I was walking inside, I heard my mom say, quote, 
Looks like you can afford to skip a meal and slapped my wife's stomach. Right as soon as I get ready to step in, literally fast walking towards them, (laughs) yelling enough, my wife winds back and punches my mom square in the face and drops her. (laughs) Where do these people live? It's giving Florida. (laughs) This is in Florida or Texas. I know it. It's It's certainly not Connecticut. (laughs) The whole house (laughs) went silent outside of my mom crying and holding her face. I tell everyone to get the fuck out. Immediately, everyone leaves and my wife just turned towards the counter and leans with her hands on the counter, face down, eyes closed. I look at my wife and say, you too, leave now. (gasps) She says, really? She's crying at this point. I say a clipped, yep. She packs up her and the baby and leaves. I text her that night and say, I just need space. I need to decompress and come to terms with what just happened. She doesn't respond. The next five days, I'm texting and calling and I get nothing. She shows up here today, so now eight days later, and hands me divorce paperwork and my baby and says, here, you have a bit to hang out with her while I pack. While I'm breastfeeding, we can work out a visitation schedule that is either at your place or my mother's until she will take a bottle. I told her, that's not what I want. I don't want to separate. I just needed time to process her punching my mother in the face. She said, quote, you needing time to process gave me time to process Mm, the fact that I refused to be in this situation any longer. I defended myself. I initially felt bad and remorseful, but you making me leave when I needed you made me see more Mm. clear. I'm done. I'm sorry for what I did, but there's no fixing this. She refused to speak to me at all the rest of the time she was there. My house feels so empty and I don't know what to do. Am I the asshole for making her leave after she punched my mom? I just needed some fucking space. That's why you live in a house with separate rooms. I mean, this is so loaded. Or you go get a hotel. Well, you, yeah, yeah you she's breastfeeding yeah, with a course, fucking yeah. baby. No, of course. Yeah. Go get you a hotel. Yourself in the situation. I mean, this is really loaded. They, this is no. like so loaded. And I think that mm. it, this is not about, I mean, yes, you could definitely split up over this or this fight here and be like, yep. this person's, I assaulted this person's mother and like, we're never going to get along. This is the end of this relationship. But it's probably about a lot of years of situations with the mother and a lot of issues with the husband for a long term. And this was just a camel, the, the camel, straw the, the camel, the, the, cam- the other camel's back. <laughs> you are like me. I can't get one single saying right. Oh my God. So, like it's about this situation, but it's like not really about the pasta, you know, like yeah. it's about other stuff. Not really about the pasta. If you need to remove yourself from a situation, which I probably would, if my spouse assaulted my parent, I would need a little bit of space. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Well, it depends what was my mom or dad. Well, the, mom assaulted her first. The mom started this. Don't start no shit. Won't be no shit. That's my whole life oh, mantra. The mom, like the mom, you started, I will finish it. Oh, like because the mom smacked the mom her stomach. Said, it looks like you could s- skip a meal. And a, hit her, so, a person just gave a babe, gave birth. Hit her so, in the stomach. Yeah. So she has this a newborn. Sounds, Fat sounds like self defense. And then slapped her stomach. Right. Like, like again, like there, I don't know the severity of the slap versus the punch like yes seeing your partner assault your parent the parents older most you know obviously so I just don't I'd have to be there to know like all this was fucked up she gave her food away knowing you know the niece did not need it whatever that removed him making her leave is it's a hard pass that's totally crazy like you can shut yourself in a room you like you said you can leave like I understand being like I cannot look at your face but the wife also just went through something too it's not like she's some violent person that wanted to assault the mom that and also this had been building up like this I, I really hated all the stuff early on about the mom like really clinging to her son and not uh. being excited about the pregnancy like that's a whole nother like can of worms but I'm not saying she was justified to punch her in the face but to make your wife with a newborn leave that's crazy in the it's middle of the night or a, another late whole at night. level of even asking someone to leave but with the child like absolutely not you this is literally grounds for divorce yeah absolutely and, listen, and eight you days can, you can't by the, you can't assault my parent that's like not an acceptable way to behave in the world but like there's <laughs> so many other factors here and you leave the the safety and comfortability of your baby is paramount mm-hmm. to all these other that things. too like she's gonna leave with the baby and at no point where you like let me go instead of you like, yeah you stay here with the baby it's crazy to me and I would absolutely Absolutely 
want to serve that person to more yeah. papers. Like, I, where, like, where are you going? Like, this this is so telling of how you even feel about our child. Like, where did where do you expect me to go? We, that's I'm such go a good to, point. What, I go to a hotel with my baby. You know, like, that's crazy. This is a really stubborn man. And I've had fights with people where I, like, get really mad. I walk out the door. I disappear on purpose for hours. They don't check in with you. And the next day, they're remorseful. They're texting you. They're, and you're, like, too fucking late, buddy. You know what I mean? I'm over it. I understand she, like, stayed away to, like, punish him for his behavior. And I would too. I don't even know if it's a punishment though. Like I truly think the minute she walked out that door, mm -hmm. she was done. Sure. I think having that buildup, like if I had a mother-in-law who was calling me fat and who basically from the minute I got pregnant was hating me, felt threatened with her relationship with her son because I'm now pregnant. It's giving weird enmeshment vibes. I don't mm -hmm. want to be a part of it. The fact that he hasn't set a boundary, he hasn't gone no contact, he hasn't really, you know, got his mom in line and said this is unacceptable. She acted this way tonight, gave the niece the food and slapped her in the stomach because she's been enabled. Mm -hmm. The right. minute she, she walks out the door, I'd be done. You're, women are so often like emotionally checked out before they physically leave. Mm -hmm. And this is a great example. Like, I think she was over it the minute she walked out. And- I'm very impressed how quick she moved. Eight I days too. to get divorce papers. Mm -hmm. I, I did not see this coming. I actually was pretty impressed at first when you said that like the wife and the mom were having issues and that the husband actually like had, he drew a boundary. He said, this is not acceptable. You can't treat it like this. And that he did it to the point that the behavior did stop. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was surprised that this it is took the turn such a it turn. took. Yeah. Well, and it's like, I think it speaks a lot to the mother-in-law and her level of derangement. But you're right. He enabled it. He made it clear that to this is To a certain acceptable. point. Like, he should have cut her off and said, you know what? Like, we're not doing this. Time should have been more supervised with the mom or something. I don't even know because the minute he walks out of the house just for a quick cigarette break, that food of hers in the fridge, gone. She comes downstairs. She's standing in the kitchen for five seconds, hits her in the stomach. Her punching the mom? Self-defense. Right. I don't yeah. think violence is a good answer a lot of times, but damn, did she deserve that? That is insane. This is insane. She has got a story to tell. The, the, she is about punching her ex-husband's mom in the face. I honestly, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear my stomach growling, but like this would, I would start swinging if someone gave my food away. Oh my gosh. And this is so like, it oh. reminds me all the time of- um, my sister-in-law when the Christmas? We, well she'd always have to go take care of they if they have like two babies now but like always have to go take care of Jay like when we we're eating and we like felt so bad but like you know it was that was the time she had to put him down and so we would have to eat you know she's like you guys eat I don't know how long this is going to take whatever mm -hmm. like when it would line up in those times and we would feel so bad and of course like Matt would like put her food aside and all that stuff so I can like picture the scene and then my mom coming in and giving Steph's food away to like the overweight niece because she's still hungry from dinner and then I, I like I can when you were telling it this is not how my family rolls at all but I was like picturing it in, in Matt's home like I was remembering I was kind Christmas of like, at your house a couple years ago yeah. and Steph made dinner and went upstairs to breastfeed and came out she missed Christmas dinner oh my god I know, I felt, yeah right she would have to press feed and all that stuff too but yeah I don't know how I'd feel if I saw her punch my mom that would be that would be tough <laughs> I honestly might laugh a little bit. <laughs> then I would jump in. <laughs> but down. it's like I can't even think about it because my mom, like, like a nervous, is the sweetest woman. You she know, wouldn't like, instigate it like of this. Of course not. Not even close. Like, like your like, brother uh, would not make anybody think that it's acceptable to be not nice to your wife. Yeah, your mom. I mean, I can't even put myself in this family. She's like, yeah. we. If don't. my sister in law hit my mom, though, I would laugh a little bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> put this. This is what you're thinking. If of. it's my family, I'm laughing a little bit before I jump to the defense of an elderly woman, which I would. But I might have a nervous laugh. I think your mom's brawling. <laughs> My mom would go bullish. Adriana she'd, she'd swings at your back. mom. Your mom, something is going to take over. She's going to tackle her to the ground. Adrian's <laughs> going to tap out. Your mom's going to have her in some like UFC hole. Choke hole. She's got, yes, so <laughs> bring out the hole. chair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh my God. I, I think that would be mine. It. That would be my mom. <laughs> so top comment on the original post. Your bitch mom is the one who got physical first. You're the asshole. Yeah, because she was defending herself from your bitch mom. They kind of quote, like, my wife is a lot of things. Violent is not one of them. So this completely came out of left field. Like, OP says that. And again, because the wife was defending herself. She punched her or she slapped her? Punched. Damn. Laid her out. Next comment down. <laughs> and instead of thinking, quote, holy crap, how have I let it come to this? He booted his wife with his infant out mm. onto the street. I can't see that there's any coming back from this. Yeah, you lost. 
We have some edits, a little update. <laughs> mm-hmm. Haven't read. I'm a little nervous. Eh. Okay, for the record, I am team wife. My mom deserved it wholeheartedly. Oh. And I've blocked her completely from my life. I literally just needed time to process what happened. My wife is a lot of things. Violent is not one of them. So that's where that came from. So this came completely out of left field and would not have happened without her being provoked. After it all happened, my mom sent me a text saying, quote, see, I told you she was crazy. That fat bitch doesn't belong in our life. Oh my God. Our life. Right. Me and you as a couple. I'm, <laughs> that's, my, that's what my mom would say about my sister-in-law. I'm willing to bet she purposefully tried setting my wife off. So now I'm on my wife's side 100%. I truly just needed to process what happened. And my wife took it as me giving up on her, not defending her and throwing her and our baby, which did essentially happen because I knew she had to take the baby with her when I kicked her out. The reason why I needed time to like process everything my dad was stupid abusive. I was beat. My sisters and brother were beat. My mom was put in the hospital multiple times. It took years for police to enforce restraining orders, and he finally died in 2013. We took a really dark turn here, guys. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there's a lot of trauma in this totally. family. Yeah. But abuse. You know, I don't like the tone of, I kicked her out of my house. You, We are married. We are a yeah, team. This is our house. This is our house. Yes. No, I can't even imagine a scenario where she has, by the way, been conditioned to think that that is even an option. Yeah. This is our home. You are never going to let me, you're never going to kick me out of our shared no. home. But she's been conditioned yeah. over a lot of years to think that this is his home and he has the right to do something like that. Even more so now. I have like, like a shred of sympathy for him. Hard. Like, sure. I don't know. He's got some self-awareness. I do like that he early on really tried with the mom. Like he was, it seems like he was on his wife's side even back then. He recognized the mom for what she was doing. He wasn't able to really enforce those boundaries, obviously. But like, he's not the worst as some of the other people we've heard on the show today. Like, yeah. and then you hear about his traumatic past and he's operating out of like a different mindset than someone who hasn't experienced something like that. So I don't know. I have a little bit. It's still, it's not okay, of course. But yeah. I wish, I wish the, I don't know. I wonder if the, if the wife would have been like, I'm not fucking leaving our house with our child. Like we can go in separate rooms and you can take your space or you can leave. Like, I wonder if she would have just come completely put him in his place. He'd be like, you're right. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like I was, I'm seeing red right now. I don't even know what to do. You punch my mom. You know, like I wonder if she would have held her ground. More communicative. But I'm wondering, like, I don't know. Is he trying to get it? Like I was worried I was going to be abusive too. I don't know. Well, I'm, so I'm he, trying to. The baby changes things for me also. Like yeah. if, if somebody assaulted my parent, I do see a scenario in which I'm like, you get the fuck out. Mm -hmm. You know, like. It's a baby for me. It's the baby. That's what I'm saying. The baby changes things for me because it yeah. like, it endangers the safety yes. Such of, a, of a child state. I do see a world in which like my partner assaults my parent and I'm like, you need the, I'm not, I'm not leaving. You're leaving. Well, and, and yeah, exactly. It's the baby. Yeah. And here's like the, the other side of that too, where this is such a vulnerable little baby. Mm -hmm. If you're so scared and frazzled by what just happened that you need space, you need time to think you need to kick your wife out. Your wife is like in this crazy state. She just punched your mom. Is she able to care for a little baby totally right now? That like, too. like mentally, she Absolutely. might need a reprieve as right. well. And now you're throwing her out, mm -hmm. putting the baby with her on top of it. Like, you're a fucking like. Yeah, what? I think that also like trauma brain is not something I understand. I came from a household where I felt physically safe at all times. I was never yeah. at risk of losing my home or my safety. Um, so I don't really understand like the yeah. brain of somebody who's been traumatized like this physically their whole life. Yeah. So like Ashley said, I do have sympathy for him because it's you just go into this like fight or flight mode. Yeah. And you're like, I have to not be in this situation. Well, and he does go on to say, violence scares the fuck out of me. I clam up and get anxious around violence of any kind now. My wife knows this, and she too grew up in a violent household, stepdad, and she gets just as anxious and panicky around violence. Her punching my mom in the face triggered an anxious response, mm. and I needed her gone in that moment. I needed it far away from me. I don't know why I just didn't leave. I could have, but in that moment, I just let my emotions and fear run the whole fucking circus and told everyone to get out, her included. My mom did slap her first, I guess for some reason I was seeing my wife's punch as being worse than the slap. It wasn't a hard slap, but my wife did kind of wince. Looking back on it now, she was fine following, but my mom was bleeding. Split her eyebrow open in good shape. I don't know. Damn, she got Thank a right you. hook on her. Dude, she got a mean right hook. 
Thank you for all the responses. I'm the asshole. I'm going to try to go kiss ass now. So maybe they didn't follow through with the divorce. I don't know. I like, you know, you can really feel the remorse and, you know, the owning of the mistake. So the wife has to run the tape on the relationship up until that point and keeping everybody's trauma and aversion to violence in mind as well and assessing the relationship and just you know, think if she wants to give him a second chance, I wouldn't be mad at it. I I, I would I I would be fine with either. Yeah. You know, not knowing these people. I mean, like, he sounds like really more more so. I mean, we always talk about people that are like master apologizers and they sound like they know all the right things to say. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he does seem like he understands his behavior, where it comes from. He's taking accountability. He's not defensive of his behavior, to be honest. He's like, I this was gross and I'm embarrassed by it. Yeah. And I had a traumatic childhood. So did she. You know, he doesn't seem defensive of his own behavior, which I like. I do like his response to this. But some people just are good at apologizing. And so like you said, she has to just kind of take stock of what has happened in the past. And can we afford therapy? Can we use some tools to kind of Mm -hmm. work through this, figure out how to communicate? Yeah. I think a couple of sessions would be like non-negotiable. It's like, that's gotta be like, you save, you prioritize that. We do have a lot of comments from OP. So Morgan post the YouTube link, please. Um, A lot of them do bring up the attachment with the mom. Maybe it's, you know, emotional incest. The wife actually does text him and says, please look up emotional incest with no context. But the the father was physically abusive to the mom. So yeah. the son also, felt really p- protected. And then the mom yeah. clung to him. A like lot it's, of trauma. They're both enmeshed. A yeah. lot of yeah. trauma. Describes what my mom was doing. I did completely block her, but it won't help my case. And then info. What other comments did your mom make about your wife? that she was stealing me away, that she wasn't good enough, made a few comments about her baby trapping me, never said it directly to me or my wife, but it got back to us quickly. She tried denying it at first, but later confirmed she said it. I just think there's a lot of really traumatic bonding that happens between like a mother and a son when Mm -hmm. the son is seeing the mother be physically abused. Especially if he's the oldest son. Absolutely. I mean, there's just, there's so much context Mm -hmm. here. So it's not that I don't judge it the same way. I judge just like some kid that had like a normal upbringing that has like a weirdly too close relationship with their mom. Like I understand why he's so protective over her. And it makes me even more impressed that he did take the step in the beginning to be like, let's draw the boundary. You can't talk to my wife like this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was the first thing that I felt positive about because some people will not do that at all. Like no. you, they will always, the mom will always be the person that wins. You know, yeah. they'll never do that. So no. I, I really hope they work it out. We have no official update okay. if divorce papers have been like rescinded, mm. nothing along those lines. But this is definitely one to keep up with, I think, because okay. Okay. he's commenting a lot still and like mm. providing more info. So Maybe we'll get an update update eventually. And also, I just want to give the wife a little bit of props that like she was like, this situation seems dangerous for me and I am going to take the steps to remove myself. So if she really feels like that for her and her child, then that's great, too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's a tough one. Definitely a tough one. I am really excited to see what everyone else in the comments on YouTube says about it. But thank you guys so much for Thanks coming. so fun. And we can't wait to have you on our show. No, we can't wait. I'm really excited. I'm trying to like strategize it so we release like similar times. But where can people find you? How can they listen to your amazing podcast? You can find Girls Gotta Eat wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, wherever. And we have full episodes on YouTube as well. And that's easy to find. Just YouTube.com slash Girls Gotta Eat. And you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Girls Gotta Eat Podcast. Uh, I'm Ash Hess. Raina is Raina Duck Greenberg. And we didn't mention this, but we do have a line of premium sex toys. Our company, Ooh, we brought, we brought, we brought you something. Can I give it to you? Ah! Um, and that is, Raina will hand it off, um, but oh my it's God, vibes I love only. Presents. And so you can go to vibesonly.com and they are incredible, life changing premium toys. They're all Bluetooth connected, so you can control them with the app. Someone control them long distance. There's a battery estimator, so your vibrator never dies on you. You always know what, it, <laughs> what, what juice it has left. This might be so the we've best really day thought of it all. Life. And um, yeah, we have lubes and blow gels and all kinds of things. So we brought you two things. Um, so we oh brought you a God. flavored blow suck and blow gel. Um, it's vulva yeah. friendly as well. So <laughs> yeah. that is our vanilla frosting. It's our best seller. Um, so you or your partner <laughs> can use it on each other. And then we brought you the Reina, which is
is a it's our number one toy. Ooh. It's a sucker on one end and just a vibrator on the other end. It's just two motors. You can use them at the same time. It's our best seller. We sell it time and time again. Oh it's God. really, really fun. And like Ashley said, it pairs with the app and you can um, have your partner control it. Okay, it that is really, really cool. <laughs> so, so pairs fun. with the app though. And you said long distance, like they can be out of state. Yeah, anywhere. As long as, as anywhere the app's available. You know, I think there's a couple countries where it's blocked. because This is yeah, how you excited. heat stuff up if you're long distance, yeah. guys. <laughs> and that's our new color of the Reina. The Reina, it's incredible. Oh my gosh. So. Look at this bad boy. We can't keep it in stock. <laughs> Look at this There's a charger boy. and a pouch for you in there too if you want to travel with yeah. it. Do you have one named after you too, Ashley? Of course. Yes. So we had the original Ashley and she, I think she is sold out or like really close to it. And we're releasing a new Ashley and it's going to be Fuck yeah. bigger. <laughs> bigger <laughs> and better. Yeah. I want to call it the Ashley Pro Max, but I don't know if <laughs> Apple would send a cease and desist. I'll just look up um, the trademark, see so, if it's there. <laughs> like, so yeah, just um, it's it'll be it'll be it'll be big, it'll be powerful, and uh, we're so excited. That's probably going to be in the spring. You're you're oh going to be exclusive God. on the on the mega Ashley. We yeah. haven't really we haven't told anybody about it yet. Yeah. No one's oh, brought me presents before. Oh, oh God. Yay. we're so excited. It. Oh, I love this. <laughs> you have to taste it and let us know what you think, and then try it. Well, I mean, you know, on your man or whatever. <laughs> It smells really good though. Yeah, oh, through the so little lid, good. it like has made me just love sucking dick. Which you know, before I wasn't <laughs> enthusiastic, but the peppermint patty, which we've sold out, that was a holiday flavor. Ooh. But the peppermint patty blowjob was just the best gift I gave my boyfriend for Christmas. Yes, you know? it's, <laughs> it just so it's the gift that just keeps on it's giving. The gift that keeps on giving. It yes. makes your mouth really juicy. It makes you like salivate, oh. and it tastes good, and it makes your breath nice. Yeah. I love that because I use coconut oil to like really speed it up and make Ooh. it easier. Ooh, so now yeah. this. That'll be great. It's like yeah. a loop. Yeah. My best friend. Sugar-free, gluten-free, <laughs> paraben-free, <laughs> sulfate-free. I don't know. Cruelty-free. You guys are just so considerate. <laughs> I will be sure to put all of Ashley and Raina's links. Girls Gotta Eat, the toys, everything will be in the description on podcast and YouTube side. So check them out. Um, thank you again for thank coming you. and Thanks. for my presence. We'll see you soon. Until next time, guys. Bye.